your job isn't to just go out and audition. Hopefully you get the job, learn the lines, show up, to, and then start the process over again. That might be the actual job of being an actor. But getting the job, as anybody in acting class will tell you, getting the job is what your job is. You're listening to Inside Acting, a podcast dedicated to demystifying the inner and outer game of success in the entertainment industry. I'm AJ Meyer. And I'm Trevor Algott. And coming up today in episode 305, we have an updated conversation with our longtime resident tax expert, Chuck Sloan of Chuck Sloan and Associates. Now, Chuck was first on our show way back in episode 13, hundreds of episodes ago. And in a way, <laughs> literally hundreds of episodes. And, and and he's kind of like here by request because a lot of our listeners reached out to the podcast through social media to say, guys, can you please have Chuck Sloan come back on and explain how the heck this new tax law thing is going to affect actors? And so, thanks to AJ, we did. Unfortunately, uh, as you'll hear, the news isn't all that great. But as always, we want it to be your source for helpful industry information. So that's exactly what we hope it is, if nothing else, helpful. Buckle up, grab a pen and paper. Episode 305 is a bit of a bumpy ride. Stay with us. Support for this episode of Inside Acting is brought to you in part by Rehearsal Pro, the current version of Rehearsal. That's the essential app for actors you've heard us talk about before. And it's available in the iOS app store for your iPhone, your iPad. If you want to learn your lines, be off book for your auditions, explore your character, make stronger, bolder choices, do a whole bunch more. Go to rehearsal.pro slash IAP as an Inside Acting podcast Right now, to learn about all the cool new features in this newest version of Rehearsal, the groundbreaking app designed by actors for actors. That's rehearsal.pro slash IAP. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 305. AJ, how are you on this fine, rainy afternoon? It has been rainy lately, hasn't it? LA is finally seeing weather. We, we don't have a ton of time uh, for this episode because you've got a boogie to a rehearsal. You're coming from work, taking like 30 minutes out of your super packed schedule to record this. And then you're jumping off to rehearsal at another uh, Jewish women's theater show. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually a performance. Oh, we you're performing tonight. Like two, three, ni- through three nights ago as of this recording. How did I not know? Am I a bad friend or have you not been telling people? <laughs> I haven't. I mean, it's not that I haven't been telling people. It's just it, it's so breakneck when I when I work with them. Like we have, oh, say, a week and a half of rehearsals, and during that week and a half, I'm maybe working like three times, and then there's like a final dress, and we go. Um, and it's it's just it's different. It's a different sort of thing. Like we're performing in people's homes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So for me, it feels weird to like invite my friends because I'm like, hey, come to this random person's house. At right. some point during the week, you know, we have shows on Monday nights and Tuesday nights, which is like not typical of, the, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it's a different thing and it's a different vibe. So, you know, when my mom um, comes to see it and when Jasmine comes to see it, uh, you know, they're going to come to more of a public space. They do, they partner with the National Council of Jewish Women, which actually has been my pick of the week in the past yeah. and do a performance at one of their big spaces as an example. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, so, yeah, so uh, that's why I don't necessarily like blast it. But at the same time, I'm proud of the work. And if you are in Los Angeles and so inclined, we might as well throw the the link up there. So the link to their website is on our website and it's the show itself is called Crossing Our Red Sea. Um, it's a good show. We've been getting great responses from the few audiences that we've had and um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the work and, and I'm, I'm happy to be working with them again. Uh, as you all have heard me say in the past, they treat their actors very well. So awesome. And I have to ask, what is it like, uh, performing in public or found spaces or even private spaces, people's houses, yeah, you said, living yeah, rooms. I was going to say, it's like the opposite. It's, it's like, instead of being, you know, doing one of those performance pieces where you're like performing under a bridge in downtown Los Angeles, which I've had friends do with, with their theater companies, um, or, uh, who was it? The, um, 
the Ahimsa Collective back before that when they were called, what are they called now? They're called something else now. They did cartel a show now, out. Cartel right? Are they called Cartel? Yeah. yeah. Car- cartel Arts or whatever. Uh, they did a show on the beach in Santa Monica, just off of Santa Monica Pier, which, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, theater can happen anywhere, right? So uh, it's sort of the opposite of that. Yeah, we are in, in people's homes. It's, it's, it's a little strange, you know, it takes some getting used to. It's, um, uh, some homes are super intimate and you're like, as soon as you stand up from, from your stool where you're reading, you're, you're right in someone's lap who's in the front row, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and some are, are bigger spaces. And last night and tonight they're, they're squeezing 80 people into like this little, you know, um, uh, living room. So it's, um, yeah, it's really fascinating. Uh, I, it does lend itself well to the medium cause it's like a staged reading, um, and, and, it, and we're just being storytellers, you know, uh, one of the directors who I've worked with before, who's not directing this show came up to me after opening night and said, you know, she's very complimentary and said, you know, I, I, sometimes I don't understand why you keep coming back. You know, you should be working. And I'm like, yeah, do you, can you be my agent? Do you need a job? <laughs> Please <laughs> right. tell, tell other spread people. the word. Yeah. Uh, spread the word. Um, but she said, you know, and then I see a show like this and I realize where else can you, you know, have an opportunity to just do what you do really well, which is be a storyteller. And that's what I love about it. I mean, in this one show, I'm doing, you know, a Russian accent, uh, a New Yorker accent and, and uh, you know, a couple of other uh, characters. Um, I think uh, like an Eastern European uh, accent and playing a range of different, you know, from drama to comedy. And, you know, she's right. Where else can I get that kind of, you know, uh, experience and be taken well care of, like get fed every time I show up to the theater for rehearsal or to one of these homes and, and get paid for the actual performances. Like I love, love, love telling the universe that I'm a paid actor. Like, yeah, I will do your show. How much, you know, it's kind of like, um, the Mark Gant thing, a hundred bucks a day. Yes. I can be in your short film. All I ask is for a hundred bucks a day. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's a game changer when um, when someone pays you for for your art, because as you've said, Trevor, I learned this from you, actually, not only does it make it what's the word I'm like, like easier, so to speak, on us to be there, like to 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 give of ourselves and our time and our talent. But it also ups. And this is what I learned from you. It ups the respect of the other person. It's like, oh, this is a professional and you get treated differently Mm. you know um yeah it reminds me of all those jokes on the internet of like the um the graphic designers who get asked to do work for free and then when they refuse like or ask for payment the 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 person on the other end is just a complete troll and you know have you seen these memes like these these back and forth anyway um it it, that's what it reminds me of because we're all artists in 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 our own way yeah I love that, man. I, it's cool. It, it sounds like what you're doing is is kind of um, right up your alley, given that you're, you're, you know, like you've said before, Mr. Ethnically Ambiguous. So you're playing in a, a very diverse, you know, set of experiences and characters and situations. But you also get to do it in this really beautifully intimate space with these audiences that are probably going to experience the theater in a completely different way as well. I, so that's super exciting that you've got... Uh, you know, yeah, I guess to echo what you're saying, it is the kind of experience that you really couldn't get in any other way. And I feel like it's the true actors among us that go back for that kind of thing time and time again. So high, virtual high five to you, my friend. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> I'm going to check Excuse it out and, and I'm going to see if I can make it to one of the performances. Uh, how much longer is it running? Please do. Uh, about a week, week and a half, something like that. Oh, sure. Um, um my mom is coming to this one. What is it? This Saturday, I think. Um, and there's like, it's a bigger room. So there's uh, lots of tickets available. That's the one at the national council of Jewish women. So, which is on Fairfax near the Grove. Got it. So changing the, uh, um, setting up every single performance or it, mostly, uh, I mean, I'm, it sounds like it's every single performance is in a brand new space. Is that, is that right? Yeah. For the most part, we, they do have a, theater space that they perform in in santa monica so we'll be doing like opening and closing night there and then the rest are just in different homes and stuff you know we get there early so we can do a we do a cue to cue every single night 
because we have to, you know, to be in that space. And I'm actually, you know, I'm playing the guitar when we enter. And so sometimes <laughs> this is just a dumb thing, but sometimes I feel like I'm trying not to like whack an audience member in the back of the head with the neck of my guitar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> just walking sideways yeah. down this like thin, you know, aisle way that they've made because they've stuffed so many chairs into someone's living room is, uh, you know, a challenge. But that's I mean, it's a small a small thing to, to a small obstacle to get yeah, over yeah cool man well yeah i'm really hoping i get a chance to make it out i'll take a look at the schedule and see what i can make make work in the next week or so um that's exciting man congrats thanks brother it would be nice yeah, it'd be great to see you there Support for this episode of Inside Acting is also brought to you in part by VO2GoGo.com, the award-winning voiceover training system and winner of Backstage's Reader's Choice Award for Best Voiceover Training four years in a row. Visit VO2GoGo.com slash start for a free getting started in voiceover online class that you can take from the luxury and the comfort of your laptop, your mobile device. This class will help you add voiceover to your acting portfolio by giving everything you need to know to get up and running right now that's vo the number two go go.com slash start and um and again we're on a schedule so i think we gotta jump right into this interview yeah yeah uh basically we met in chuck's house thanks again chuck for sitting down with me Hey guys, AJ here, and I am recording this little interlude here independently of the bookends that Trevor and I recorded to bring you an apology of sorts. I recorded this interview with Chuck in his living room and was, uh, I basically, I made a rookie mistake and I was not monitoring myself on the recording device that we use for our interviews. And as a result, was not aware of how badly the heater in Chuck's living room was affecting the audio quality. I, when I was editing the interview after the fact, I did my best to clean it up and put some noise reduction on there and some compression on there for you audio nerds out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and it was still listenable as it were. I could still hear it and understand it, but after it was compressed for the format that we published the podcast in, um, it has become nearly unlistenable. So as you're listening to this interview, know that there are a couple of moments when the heater kicks on and it is very difficult to understand myself or Chuck and for that, I am deeply, deeply sorry. If you have any questions about the things that are said in those portions of the interview, please do not hesitate to reach out to us, especially me since I was in the room with him and I can break down any questions that you have. Uh, I mentioned that again on the other side of the interview that, you know, uh, I'm an open book, we're an open book, we're here to support you guys. And uh, again, apologies for uh, for that uh, misstep on my part. Enjoy the interview as much as possible. We'll catch you on the other side. With your friend and mine, uh, I should say, I should say, um, tax prepared to the stars, 
<laughs> a few. Chuck Salone. Um, do you realize that you were on episode 13 of this podcast? Yes, and I, like... and I remarked about how lucky that was for you. <laughs> well, I, I was going to joke with you that uh, uh, since you came on the show, you've moved into new offices. The, uh, the business has grown a bit, and I was going to take all the credit for it. You certainly can, and I was afraid you were going to tell me this is episode 666. No. No, not quite. We're halfway there. This is going to be episode like 305 or something like that. Uh, we have uh, cat scratching in the room. We have a dog barking out the back. But most importantly, we have you here with us. Uh, we had several of our listeners s- smartly reach out via uh, social media and email after the uh, new GOP tax plan passed saying, can you please, please, please get Chuck back on the show to explain how this is going to affect us as performers. So that's the main reason for uh, for the visit and for the updated interview. But before we dive into that, uh, as I mentioned, you know, it's been years since we had you on the show. So um, what's been, uh, tell us about uh, what's been happening with you uh, since then and the, and the business. The business has grown, as you said, and you're taking credit for all of it. I think at the time that you did that first interview, I can't give out real numbers, but I'd say we have doubled since that interview. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise and me. And I'll leave it there. Um, we did the interview in the, in the old office. Yes. And then the people next door wanted that office, so we were bought out to move. And, oh. And the most important thing that we, when we moved, we needed to make sure we had parking. And as dumb as it sounds, that's the hardest thing in yeah. Hollywood or L.A. to find a place that is a legit business, easy to find, and has accessible parking. Yeah. And you guys are open all, not 24 hours, but, but all hours during uh, peak tax season. Some preparers are there <laughs> at 8 in the morning, and then other preparers are leaving at 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. Me in the middle, I show up in the afternoon. I'm here. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are working very, very hard. Yeah. God yeah. bless them. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, we were, men- we were mentioning before we started recording how much uh, they've all learned from you. And, you know, um, Trevor and I uh, have only been to, to Lindsay the whole time we've been going to your office. But, um, you know, I have friends that have gone to other uh, uh, of your associates, other preparers, and, and, you know, always had a great experience. I, I do, you know, in all seriousness, I do hope that we've, you know, brought some, some people. We to- hear about it periodically. And I go, I did that. Eight years ago, what do you? Where do you find that? <laughs> um, the internet is forever. It's forever. <laughs> uh, yes, we do get a number of responses. Um, oh, that's awesome! Uh, that they heard about us through that, or I heard from a friend who who listened to some sort of something on the internet, and you never know where never it comes know. from. Never know. Well, uh, it's it's great to hear that uh, things are are growing, and I, you know, like s- the listeners that reached out to us on social media, I too was basically waiting to to get my taxes done before I got a chance selfishly to sit down and talk to you uh, about all this myself. So you weren't going to come in at all. You were going to skip the leave the country and not have to pay your taxes. Yeah, yeah, that was my plan. Yeah, okay. tickets tickets to. Uh, well, an undisclosed location. I'm not going to... There were some people who thought the world was going to fall apart when that tax plan passed. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I hope that uh, we can assuage, assuage some fears uh, through this conversation. I'll say it this way, and most people may or may, you know, it's all a basis of numbers. We have a little side program within our big tax program that allows us to take the numbers from your current tax return and run it and see what would happen against... Next year's tax plan. Oh, interesting. And I would say it, I, I was going to use a higher number, but I'll be conservative and say at least 70% of the people that I've worked with so far have come out ahead. Okay. The tax plan actually helps them. There are those who have significant deductions. And the big thing about the tax plan for actors and performers and such is the inability to write off miscellaneous expenses in the future. They're not miscellaneous in our world. Agents' commission is hardly miscellaneous. Yeah, and that was the big one I wanted to ask you about. Well, all too often, agents' commission can be 10, 15, 25%. Mm -hmm. 25% of your gross income that now you have to pay taxes on and you cannot write off. Right. There are ways around that if you make enough money as an actor and have significant deductions, and that is several people 
not all, but several people can certainly come in and consider uh, forming a corporation, mm -hmm. an S Corp, so that under an S Corp banner, you can still write off your deductions and take advantage of all those write offs and other things. But the hang up is that by forming a corporation, there are additional costs. Right. A, a very conservative number and would be at least $3,000 a year mm. in additional costs. If you can't save at least three thousand dollars by forming a corporation, or whatever you choose, it makes no sense. Don't do it. Yeah. And certainly, when that passed, we were getting all sorts of emails and people. What do we do? What do we do? What are we going to? do? And it's it's calmed down. Yeah. And amazingly, several several people thought it affected them for this year's taxes. Meaning, when we pr prepare last year's return, we're doing it this year, um, and they've gotten over that fear for some people it's beneficial I had one client yesterday and one the day before who makes significant money as a performer as an actor and as a result they have significant deductions uh, and I simply sent them over to one of our corporate people and said sit down and have a conversation make your decision uh, got it. they'll give you the facts because they haven't yet incorporated no, but then the question is, how soon should I do it? Right. If you should incorporate and you anticipate significant work coming up, and how many of us know that we have significant work coming up? <laughs> we all wish we had significant <laughs> yeah, work, yeah. but whether it comes true or not depends on how often we say our prayers. But if you are anticipating significant work or you have a track record of regular work, you should probably consider incorporating, but don't jump into it without doing the research. Right. Without sitting down with somebody, getting a full understanding and explanation, there are additional costs. There's all sorts of things you have to do. You don't just keep your receipts. You now have to do some bookkeeping throughout the year. Um, there are things you have to do to legitimize the corporation. Mm. You have to have payroll. And this will be something that a lot of people may argue with, but one of the reasons several people have been able to incorporate in the past and not make what we used to say was $150,000 minimum is because they're not paying payroll to themselves. Mm. I don't want to get into a long discussion on that, but in our office, our feeling is you have to pay yourself at least half your, half the money you earn should be paid out in payroll. The other half is given, you still get that money, but it's shown up on your return a different way. Right. The IRS has very specific rules that you have to pay yourself a decent salary. That's not their word, but I'll use that for simplicity. Yeah. And then the, but they don't specify and outline what that is. And so there are some CPAs who go, oh, just, just write it off, you move it over and don't pay yourself anything. And you, you don't want to do that. It's a recipe for getting audited. Not necessarily <clears throat> just getting audited, but the IRS comes down and then you get fined. And, mm. uh, yeah, it's, it can be a problem, but I do urge you to learn how to do it properly. I like to think that we do it properly. Um, one of our preparers who initiated the whole uh, corporate process for us has been very adamant with all of our newer people that are doing corporate returns now to make sure that that's getting done. Yeah. There were a few things, you know, I figured that the conversation would kind of, you know, go in and out of topics organically, but there were a couple of points that I wanted to hit. Talking about incorporating was definitely one of them. The other one was, you already mentioned it, the the commissions. And uh, before we get into that, in case there's someone who um, either is very young and, and hasn't really had to deal with, you know, doing some complicated taxes or performer taxes or has not yet taken the time to educate themselves on it. Um, I just want to take a step back and just let's just talk quickly about defining the glossary term that is write off, you know, so that we so that as we, you know, talk well, we about have, it, we, we have a 14 page <clears throat> pamphlet that we ask you to fill out. Oh, I, I know I'm you very familiar with that about, pamphlet. It <laughs> tells you all about deductions. So you want me to truncate that down to what, five seconds? <laughs> sure, sure. In essence, and I'll try to use the correct terms here, anything that the IRS, anything that is considered ordinary and necessary to pursue your career, and that's the, literally the term that the IRS uses, ordinary and necessary, 
um, you are allowed to, you have been allowed in the past to write off. The current tax law that has, was just passed in December no longer allows you to write off miscellaneous expenses. Now, when I said it earlier in the broadcast, I thought, I better explain what miscellaneous means. Yeah. That's actor. Those are actor deductions. Driving to, to find uh, an audition. Driving to class. Driving to the staples to pick up the stapler so you can staple your resume to your headshot. Getting the headshots in the old days. I mean, are, do we still use those? Anymore? Yes, it, it's 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 becoming increasingly rare. But yes, I keep hearing that. No, no check, it's all done on the internet anymore. I sent an eight by ten through the no. <laughs> um, any expense you have as an actor used to be deductible, and depending upon how you make your money, you still can write those off in future years if you make cash income. I'm a model. I do an industrial, which is supposed to be union, but most of the time it's not. Mm. And then there are those who will do work outside the union. And if you're doing non-union work, it's generally paid in cash. When I say in cash, you get a check, of course, but they don't take out any withholding. That's cash income. Right. Whether you're paid with a credit card, you're paid through Venmo, you're paid with a check, or they literally hand you buckaroos, that's cash income. That's reported on a certain form that allows us to continue writing off expenses against that income. But in general, usually you had to write it on what, a form that went to your Schedule A. And on the Schedule A, they no longer allow these miscellaneous deductions. But that's everything. Agent's commission, which we've already discussed, can be 25% in today's world. It was only 10% when I started out. And the idea of having a manager, too, was why? Agents aren't doing what agents used to do. And now you need a manager to do it with your agent and or push your agent and or whatever. Um, if you go out and if, you, if you're taking acting classes, no, you can't write those off. Getting pictures taken, no, you can't write those off. Pretty much anything that you used to do as an actor is no longer allowed to write off. And even though our people, the corporate people, say, oh, yeah, if you've got an agent and a manager and you've made $70,000 or more, you're going to have a hefty deduction, and, and that might be worth incorporating. Well, $70,000 is significantly less than 150000 that we used to say you needed to make in order to validate having a, a corporation or becoming incorporated. Um, so it's a significant change. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm one of those people. I have an agent and a manager, so it is 25%. So hearing that I wasn't going to be, in future years, allowed to write off 25% uh, of my income that I'm technically not seeing, uh, or at least I'm you know, giving away sort of instantaneously, that was pretty upsetting. Um, and uh, I wanted to sort of, you know, talk it through, not necessarily get to the bottom of it, but talk about what the what the options are. So you're now you're saying it's it's everything, um, like not just agent commission. It's everything. So do you do you still have? Uh, will you guys in future years have the same packet on the website to to fill out, or is it kind of moot at this point? Um, and then and then if there aren't these write offs, then uh, I feel like. That does mean, in fact, that most performers are going to be, if, especially if they're not incorporated and aren't making that kind of money, are going to be paying a lot more in 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 te or not getting as big of uh, returns or paying more in taxes. You're going to be result. paying more in taxes yeah. if yeah. you. What a deduction does is it lowers your income. Right. If I have a thousand dollars worth of deductions, I therefore. I'm eliminating $1,000 of my income, and I don't have to pay the normal tax on that $1,000. If I'm in what was at one time essentially the lowest bracket, if you're making some money, was 15%. So mm -hmm. $1,000 worth, worth of deductions saved me $150. Right. If I'm in the 25% bracket, that would have saved me... $250. Oh, we got a winner! <laughs> and it could go higher depending upon who you're married to. Those are the kinds of things that most people don't take the time to learn. And when you come in to get your taxes done and you just got married or you've been married a year and now you're in that situation, we have to explain to you what happened. Well, when I, when I was single, I didn't have to pay that much. And now you're being taxed at your spouse's rate. Mm. 
Oh, it's still painful, and, and you have to open your mind to the fact it's going to cost you money. So those are deductions. That's what a deduction can do for you. Ultimately, your question was, do I have to keep my deductions now? You don't know if you're going to get paid in cash. You don't know when you go out for a job in today's world, whether it's going to be a union job or you're going to get paid in cash or the producer just decides, nah, I'm just going to give you, I, I don't want to have to worry about payroll. I'll just give you the check. Well, you have to report that income and, and therefore you can use those deductions against your cash income. And then something else I thought of a couple days ago, I thought, you know, I haven't heard anything from the state of California that says they're going to no longer allow those same deductions or whatever the process is that California is going to use to determine your taxable income. They use the numbers that come over from the federal tax return, but this is California, and you have no idea what they might do to change the rules in California that would allow actors to continue writing off their agent manager commissions and all the other expenses that they have. Would that only affect state taxes, though? Yes, but okay. but in order to, if you've been told, oh, you don't have to keep your deductions, you don't have to keep your receipts anymore, you don't have to add those things up, and all of a sudden you find out you've lost the money because it's too late. So I would urge everybody to keep doing what you've been doing. You may or may not have to add it up, but it's better to have the receipts and be able to add them up than to not, to not have them because some friend of yours said, oh, yeah, well, you can't use those anymore, so throw them away. That's not necessarily true. Hmm. So you'll keep the packet. You'll still have your clients fill them out. They'll come in, and then it's just a matter of figuring out if it's going to make a difference or not. Well, if you make cash income, <clears throat> your model, as good-looking as AJ is, he'll have to deal with this. <laughs> If you make cash income as a model, it may be as much money as you make doing a movie or a TV show mm. or a commercial. So you've made $30,000 modeling. You make another $30,000 doing commercial. We can split your deductions and use half of them against the cash income. And half, we can no longer use the other half against the 30000 that you made on, as an employee. But we can use it against that cash income. You want to, because it's costing you an arm and a leg not to use them. Right. So keep them. We'll figure out what we're going to do. We had a meeting around January 15th, right after the law changed, and we still had trouble getting information on the specifics of the law, which to a degree is still true. Hmm. Wow. You know, we're, we're all kind of going, okay, no deductions. That's the one thing we have heard, or no, no miscellaneous expenses, I should say. You are still allowed to have deductions. If you own a house, you can write off your interest. If you have a house, you can write off taxes on the house. If you give to charity, you can still write off the charity. If you have medical deductions, you can still write that stuff off. You just can't write off what we call our actor deductions. Mm. And there's always the possibility that that might certain things might change. Uh, one of the problems that actors have in their concept of taxes is the tax if and I told people if I were a congressman or a senator at the time, despite knowing as I'm, as much as I do about actor taxes, the law that was passed is in fact generally a good law that will reduce taxes for most people in the country. But Chuck, what about actors? Oh, you mean the two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand people in this country who make enough money to have expenses in the industry? We have how many? 350 million people in the country, and we're supposed to be worried about 1% of 1% or whatever that number is. Yeah. Congress isn't supposed to do that. Mm. Um, but, gee, wouldn't it be great if Congress or someone decided to say, hey, these people shouldn't have to pay that 10 or 25% to an agent and a manager and still have to pay taxes on it when the agent and the manager are also paying taxes on it. Right. Wouldn't, and this is something I tried to get proposed now 17 years ago, to allow actors to write off agent and manager commissions as an adjustment to their income. Yeah. If you eliminate that, most actors will be happy. Yeah. Now, that's not to say every actor 
I've seen actors have fifteen thousand dollars worth of expenses without agent and manager mm-hmm. because they're just starting out and they're jumping in with both feet and learning what they need to learn, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But if if Congress would allow you to write those things off as an adjustment to income, and the only way you can do that is to fill out what's generally called a ten ninety nine. If I pay my agent six hundred dollars or more, I have to send them a ten ninety nine. I have to send that into the U.S. government, but then I'm allowed to write it off. I think overall, it's it helps the IRS to collect money rather than not. There are agents in town who do not report all of their earnings. There are certainly managers in this town who don't report their sure. income. So all of a sudden, the IRS is going to have records of all that money coming in, which should be equal to what actors are, are losing. It would incentivize the actors to, to report it. When you pass a law through Congress, it has to generally be a zero change. You can't, they don't like to pass a law that costs the government money. Hmm. And this would pretty much be a zero. You, the actors have to report it, and the agents then, the managers then have to report it, and the amount, same amount of taxes are still going to be paid. Right, right. So it sounds like it's well. It's first of all, it's happening. Um, not this year, but next year. The tax law changes. The tax law, right, right, is what's happening. And um, and it does include not being able to deduct um, the commissions anymore. Um, and other ex- and all your other and expenses. other mis- miscellaneous. So, so then I guess my next question becomes: um, if you're not incorporated, um, then is, does that mean that nothing really counts as a business expense? So, like, if I get new headshots or I get headshots printed or, you know, all these things that are, quote, unquote, required or I'll say ordinary and necessary, and necessary. right, for, for running that, that, that business. Your business. Correct. Because I'm not incorporated, I can't, I can't write it up. <clears throat> it's overly simplistic in all regards. Miscellaneous deductions are what give us the ability to earn a living. If I don't have pictures, if I don't go to auditions, if I don't take classes, right. those are hardly miscellaneous deductions in my world. They're very important. They're not only ordinary, they're very ordinary, and they're very necessary. In today's world, I won't be allowed to write it off. And even though actors, as I said, get very angry about this, say, yeah, why would they do that? Most people aren't in that situation. Hmm. Name me an industry that you have to pay 10 to 25% of your income to, a, to an agent or a manager. Right. Other than acting, right? I can think of one athletes. Oh, I, that was actually going to be my guess. Yeah. Athletes, but athletes. they're generally incorporated, <clears throat> and make, and they're making, making enough money, money to make yep. it worth their while to incorporate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they don't have a problem with this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've gotten so good as a result of your office and my my um, learning, learning from you and Lindsay at at. I mean that packet is like. That's like two days of my life, and I and I actually, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily enjoy the admin of it, but I do enjoy the like I did my due diligence of like you know collecting all of these receipts and, and knowing how they're categorized and knowing what I can and cannot write off, and um, and that you know I keep all of my movie receipts, but only these two were used for research, so I'm gonna write just those two off, and I keep all of my receipts for food. Um, you know, but I'm only writing off these ten because they were I t- you know took out my specifically agent for you know, business. All of that, speci- yeah, exactly, specifically for business. So I've I, I for me, it's been this sort of sense of, of pride, and I think um, I think just par- part of the um, my own personal gripe is like, oh, like I, I learned all that stuff, and now it's um, like you said, we're not you shouldn't not keep the receipts, but it feels like um, all of that. Uh, sort of work is 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 feels sort of for not at this point. I used to <clears throat> lecture that you should keep your records for mileage. You should know who you're going to go see for an audition. You should tally who you went to see for auditions. Your competition that does that, whether they actually sit down and run the numbers or they just mentally keep the record in their head. If I used to see this casting director eight times a year, and now I only see them twice a year, why? And I better know that reason why. Mm -hmm. 
It's possible my looks have changed, so I'm not being brought in for the young high school kids anymore. It's possible they're casting younger or older shows or whatever the situation might be, and that's the reason. But your job is to know who's calling you in and why, and figuring out a way to get seen by those people who are casting what it, it is that you're right for. And if you're not paying attention to who you've seen in the past and how many auditions you used to have and why you're not seeing them anymore, you're not doing your job. And somebody else out there who is successful is doing their job. So just the process of going through those receipts again, how much money did I waste seeing these people, you know, once a month for dinner and it never went anywhere? Mm. Why am I spending money on these people when I could be meeting with other people? And that's not to say every time you have a meal, you should do it for the process of (laughs) advancing your career. But at the same point, there are people who do that, who think that way. Mm -hmm. And you you can't know what you're doing if you don't go back and relive that year. You spent how much money at what place a month, $350 taking acting classes? What did you learn? Ah, that was a waste of time. It wasn't three hundred and fifty dollars worth, yeah, yeah. And and you need to remind yourself before you jump into the next three hundred and fifty dollar a month class or whatever it might be. Yeah. No, it's an interesting point. I mean it creates a it creates a, a, a new it certainly creates a new value for me. Not <clears throat> not that I hadn't thought about that when I was going through the process myself, but it does create a new value in 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 doing that you know usually like i said it's a it's a couple of eight hour days where i just pretend like i'm going to work but i'm going to work with my but you're but the average businessman has to do that yeah the good professional businessmen do it regularly Mm. you keep hearing of business people who are no longer well contractors for example who have to stop working every day as a contractor because they have paperwork to do yeah, but by staying on top of their business and knowing what the business should be doing, it's actually helping them. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a contractor, attorney, whatever the situation may be, that's your job. Your job isn't to just go out and audition. Hopefully, you get the job, learn the lines, show up, to, and then start the process over again. That might be the actual job of being an actor, but getting the job, as anybody in acting class will tell you, getting the job is what your job is. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to do the work to get it. So moving forward after this year, when, uh, when the, during the this year, or, during this year, yep. What are your, what have, what are your suggestions for, uh, for actors and other performers who maybe aren't in, well, I was going to say 150,000, but it sounds like some other people are even saying 70,000 and above. Uh, sort if of income you think for... you might be one of those people that could benefit by having by being becoming incorporated, and I'm not even going to explain what that means, but an escort means you're hiring yourself out as a corporation. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it there. If you think you might be, go ahead and give us a call. We'll set up an appointment with one of our people, and they'll walk you through it. You'll have to look at last year's return if you haven't worked with us before, and we'll look at the numbers and see where you're at. Get your taxes done and bring that tax return in and have a have a conversation with us. Uh, if you just pick up the phone and call, I don't know, what's somebody online that can set up a corporation for you, you're in trouble. They're in the business to set up in corporations, and you may or may not need one. Mm-hmm. And getting out of a corporation can be very expensive. Just having a corporation in the state of California will cost you $800. Every year, you will have to pay a certain fee for the legal aspects of remaining in corporation. You will have to pay the fees to become incorporated. You will have to pay the bookkeeping fees to be to make sure you're paid properly. And that's where that three thousand dollars and or more comes in. Right. Will I save that money? Not if I'm not spending it. Not if I don't have enough deductions. <clears throat> And if you aren't making seventy grand or so as an actor and therefore paying out ten to twenty five percent for commission alone, twenty five percent of seventy thousand dollars. I'm asking him because I don't want to do it. 
Uh, 14, uh, 17, 17,500. So if I have $17,500 worth of just agent commissions without the classes, without the meetings, without the, the pictures and, 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 and easily 20 grand. Therefore, I could very well save at least $3,000. I, I'm nowhere near that. And uh, and the income been, or expenses the income okay the income or the expenses um, they haven't uh, ever gotten to that point. There have been a couple of years where the vast majority of my income came from being an actor and still wasn't seventy thousand or or more. So um, what is there anything? My, I guess my question is: there anything to be done, or do we just you know keep sort of plugging along as most business actors as usual? don't make a living as an actor, right? The union says what eight to ten percent of the people. I think it's less than that, but might make enough money as yeah. an actor to make a living. Yeah. Um, so it's very rare. So when we said, when I said earlier, three hundred and fifty thousand, three hundred thousand people are members of SAG and AFTRA and maybe Equity, and the different people that would be involved at Equity that are not members of SAG as well. Let's mm -hmm. say three hundred thousand. Yeah. The union might argue it'll be a little bit more, but that's not a whole lot of people in this country. And of that number of people, how many of them just have a card just to say, look, I used to be an actor, or look, I am an actor? So we'll lower that to 100,000 people who are actually trying to be an actor. Yeah. Um, and of those people, they'll have, they'll have expenses, but they're not going to have a lot of expenses. You're not going to have to pay the agent and manager Hopefully, if you're not earning money. Right. right. So we're not talking a whole lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. So so your uh, I guess your advice moving forward is, you know, business as usual. Hang on to the receipts uh, still because of, um, well, two things. One, there's still a bit of fog around uh, the law. And number two, we're not sure, for instance, what some of the state uh, tax laws are going to do. I, it, I might have spoken out of turn. It may be that they come down with a decision tomorrow. But at this point, I thought, I don't. I have not heard from California what they intend to do. Hmm. And you know how California feels about certain things in Washington anyway. Yeah. They may just say, well, we're going to let you do this. Yeah. Because we don't like Washington. Yeah. Um, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so you have to go in and get your tax return done. You have to do all that eight hours work or more. So that you can save some money on your tax return in the state of California? Eh, 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 who knows? Yeah. Um, suffice to say, though, as I said, we had our meeting in, I think it was the 15th of January. And everybody was looking around saying, well, well what are you going to do next year? What are you going to do next mm -hmm. year? Are we even going to be in business next year? Yeah. And we had to discuss. She's I hope so. <laughs> and... Is it possible you might be able to do your return on your own next year? We've always doubted that. It should be easier if you don't if you're not able to write off these deductions. Right. On the other hand, I don't know. I've always I've always had a problem with TurboTax or that kind of thing. Well your taxes are free. Really? <laughs> We're gonna have an expert look at your free taxes and not charge you anything? It's a game. Yeah. Um, nothing is free. And I've had any number of people get themselves into trouble doing their own taxes. They just keep saying yes to everything. And that gets you into trouble. Yeah. Um, I, do, uh, I do think you should learn how to do your taxes, but you should sit down with somebody that knows how to do them and make sure that it was done properly. Yeah. Um, so be careful. I'm not trying to scare you into having to go see a tax preparer. I understand it's frustrating. This time of year, we charge $210 for a return. That's a cheap price. But on the other hand, we we hear from actors all the time, well, I never I never had to fill out this packet. In the past, my preparer just, just made up the numbers. Oof. All the time. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. Learn what you can and can't write off. 
You can go to the website, chucksloan.com. You can download the tax packet. It's fairly self-explanatory. You're going to hear things that you don't like if you haven't done your research yet. Well, my preparer lets me have all of this. No. Yeah. I've had arguments with people who are experienced actors. Well, I went to an audit and they let me have all of the wardrobe, all my clothing. Well, that's because you had everything else that was wrong. They didn't want to fight over every single item you had in your return. <laughs> they just gave up the fight. And you can't explain that to people, so you just kind of go, ah. learn what you can and can't write off. And in the past, I used to say, I used to be able to say you have enough legitimate legal deductions, you don't have to lie. And now in today's world, I can say, it doesn't really matter because <laughs> you can't write them off anyway. <laughs> so time to yeah. give up. <clears throat> yeah. Okay? Yeah. Oversimplistic on that statement. I don't know what the future is going to hold. I'd like to see some changes too. I don't know if it's going to happen. But at this point, keep your records. Just how difficult is it? Get a box. Throw your receipts in the box. Yep. That's what I do. And then I hire someone to come in and add it all together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said the same thing eight years ago. So It's exactly uh, what yeah. I do. It's a and different person every year. But... <laughs> And then as you go through them at the end of the year, you're going to learn what you do need to keep and what you don't need to keep. Mm -hmm. If you spend money and you think it might have something to do with your business, keep it. Somebody's going to argue with me because now I'm saying I'm wasting your time because you don't have to do that anymore. I will probably win. I will probably win and I will say you, if you make any cash income, you'll be able to use at least some of those expenses. Yeah. If they change the law in the future, don't get out of practice. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't keep practicing if I don't stay sharp as an actor if I don't take those classes if just to read a script if just to break down a script once a week if I don't stay sharp my competition is out there doing the right things yeah. and my job as I've said about any business I cannot be successful in a business if I'm not in the business and if I can't afford to stay in the business, I'm not in the business. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed uh, the third conversation that AJ has had with Chuck Sloan of Chuck Sloan and Associates on this podcast over the years. AJ, any big um, takeaways, any any major um, sort of things you want our listeners to walk away with from this to highlight? Um, I mean, I think Chuck said it in the interview, like, don't stop collecting your receipts. Um, don't, uh, don't make any assumptions on, you know, what it's going to look like moving forward. And, um, and don't, necessarily be super doom and gloom um until you until you know um you know as he said they do have a you know a project projection software if you want to see what it will look like next year under the new tax law and um <clears throat> because there are i was going to say less write-offs because there's basically no write-offs against employment income as opposed to cash income you can still write off stuff against your cash income because there's just write-offs um uh no write-offs against your employed income uh, for a lot of people it's putting them into a new tax bracket and with the new law they're actually doing better as a result um, because of the restructuring so don't fret um, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and, um, and, and just kind of see where the chips fall when they fall. And that's all we can really do at this point. Um, I would say that if you have any gig or gigs whatsoever that are, um, cash income, uh, you have got to write off as much as you can against that income and put actor slash whatever it is, actor slash babysitter, actor slash bookkeeper, actor slash, um, you know, personal organizer, actor slash computer consultant, actor slash whatever on your, your, what's called your schedule C. And you can write stuff off that you use for both. You know, um, I don't know if it's in the interview, but Chuck uh, asked me, he goes, do you have a headshot on your, you know, consultant website? And I was like, yes, I do. Oh, I see where you're going with this. 
I can write it off. I just write it off in a different way, not necessarily as an actor, but as the slash whatever. So, um, you know, keep plugging away uh, and take deep breaths. Hopefully we're going to make it through um, Trump land. The end. <laughs> All right. Hey, this is not an uh, an unrelated segue. What is your pick of the week? <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I've actually picked my pick of the week because this uh, publication has turned so political recently. I don't. They really. Yeah, they have. I don't think it was always like this, but uh, my my pick of the week is uh, Outside Magazine. Or, or OutsideOnline.com. Um, they also have a really great newsletter that you can subscribe to and a bunch of awesome articles on their website. So as our listeners know, I've been getting more and more and more into um, uh, opting outside, as REI puts it, uh, recently, even though it was, you know, it's been something that I've been doing since I was a baby. I got my first tooth camping, put it that way. So um, <laughs> yes. It's a true story. So Outside Magazine um, has it, – it seems as though uh, in the state of the union here, we can't help but politicize – you know, everything is being politicized, including um, – the outdoors. I don't know how else to say that. So um, Outside Magazine in their newsletter has been talking about um, the sort of, um, you know, I don't want to be dramatic, but the war on public lands lately amongst other things. And and so, you know, when the, the whole thing happened with Bear Ears and uh, Grand Staircase in, um, in Utah, they had a bunch of different articles talking about what was happening um, what, how, how it was going to change. And, um, and you know, they, they have just been sort of, their hand has been forced a little bit to politicize, uh, something that I didn't know or think would be politicized, which is the outdoors, um, you know, just nature. And, and I get that it's very closely tied to, um, you know, global warming and, and a lot of the stuff that we have talked about on the podcast before, and that is politicized, but it was just really interesting to see this turn happen recently in their, um, publication and in their articles. So, uh, outside online.com is the link that we put on our website, but you can go there, check out their article, sign up for their newsletter. And, uh, if you're at all interested in the intersection between, um, the out, doors and and politics it, it really is an awesome resource right now so uh check that out right on do you find that 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 they send out a pretty high quality newsletter is it is it nutritious in terms of information or is it more promotion noise type stuff well they they do both um admittedly a lot of the but but to their credit a lot of the promotional and advertisement stuff is uh, quote unquote below the fold so you'll have like three really great articles and then the first promotional or advertising thing and then a few other articles and then some other promotional stuff at the bottom and i usually only click on those first three uh links or so sometimes only one that I'm interested in. And it goes back and forth between, you know, like outdoor news and outdoor like s survival and, and, you know, top places to go backpacking kind of stuff. And then recently it's, you know, talking about the Keystone XL pipeline and, uh, you know, these uh, national uh, monuments in, in Utah and, and, you know, um, there's, it's funny. I went onto their website in order to grab the link for our outline. And one of the top articles says, I own eight guns and still hate the NRA. So <laughs> it's, uh, wow. it's just really interesting what's going on over at that publication. But if, uh, if, like I said, if you're all in, at all interested in this intersection of, um, of the outdoors and politics, I would, I would sign up for that newsletter. I would love to have been in the room when all the executives and all the staff met and they were like, okay, how political do we want to get? Are we at our breaking point? And everyone was like, yay. <laughs> like hands went up. Right. And they were like, okay, here we go. New, new territory for the magazine. Absolutely. And I honestly think it happened around, uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, diminishing those two national monuments, uh, monuments in Utah. I think people were just yeah. like, we're like, that's it. We're putting our foot down, you know, and they sold them off to like oil interests and stuff. It's crazy. It's super it's messed up. Absolutely. Ah, yeah. oh, man, just breaks my heart. Yeah. 
Um, and, uh, and yeah, speaking of uh, taking care of the planet, uh, I'm looking at your pick of the week, and uh, I would patronize this place <laughs> every day for every meal if I could. Yeah, um, yeah. It's your pick of the week, my friend. Yeah. Well, you're you're a more frequent patron of this place than I am, but I, I've been budgeting like a champ lately. I've just been really good with uh, financial forecasting. I feel like I've finally worked out a financial system that works for me really well, where I can enjoy the things I enjoy, but also aggressively pay down my debt and have savings and and feel completely stress-free around my finances for the most part. So I was able to finally go to this place and have a proper meal, like a three-course proper meal. And this place is none other than Sage Vegan Bistro. There's a couple locations in L.A. There's one in Pasadena. There's one in Culver City. And I think there's a third one. Am I wrong about that? Um, well, if there's one in Pasadena, then yes, because I believe there is one um, in like – the sort of Los Feliz kind of area. Okay. You know, where all the hipsters live. <laughs> well, I guess we could go to the website that we have on our uh, on our show notes to, to <laughs> take a look and find out for sure. No, but, let's guess. Yeah, in the meantime, <laughs> let's guess. But uh, I finally went there the other day and I had a proper meal. Um, and it's funny, I've been there many times, but I've never actually like sat down to fully invest myself in a, in a proper meal. And the hype is real man that place is freaking rocking dude i had just so much good food so many interesting flavors and textures and ingredients that i hadn't had before and combinations of things i i got the uh the vegan jackfruit nachos which i know well everything's vegan there but i got the jackfruit nachos which i know you're a big fan of aj you and jasmine huge fan love those well and for good reason they're they're like a top seller they're phenomenal and then i had the vegan why don't i keep saying vegan it i had the butternut squash ravioli <laughs> all, it's all vegan <laughs> yeah exactly Butternut squash ravioli, which apparently is a favorite, and then I had a pizza of some kind. I don't remember which one it was, and then I had the brownie dessert. Oh my god, dude! It was I was with people, so I didn't eat all this myself, but I could have. Um, anyway, check it out. <laughs> if, I could have. <laughs> if you're in LA, I mean, just forget the vegan part. Like that shouldn't even be a factor. This is just good oh, food. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's important to say, Trevor. Definitely. It's not even. It's not even a thing. Just forget the vegan part. It is just really good food. Don't even. Some people get weirded out by like, whoa, where's the meat? This is only plants. I'm confused. It's not exactly the same. I'm grossed out. It's like, dude, just go and enjoy food. That's it. And don't don't worry. Don't worry too hard about whether or not it came from an animal. Uh, it's excellent stuff, man. I, I would definitely put this in my top five um, culinary uh, experiences in L.A. for sure. So check it out. Uh, link to that is on our website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as well as a link to Outside Magazine, outsideonline.com. So um, hope to see you at Sage. Hope to see you outside. Anything to add in before we boogie out of here? No, nah, man. Let's roll. All right. Today's episode of Inside Acting was produced and hosted by yours truly, A.J. Meyer, and of course, Trevor Algat, who, by the way, sticking around for a few more episodes. Why? Because we have a couple of really awesome interviews that he wanted to score and did. They're being, uh, they're currently scheduled. They have not been recorded yet, but they will be. Um, and so, Trevor, um, thank, we're all grateful that Trevor is actually going to be here uh, a little bit longer. So regardless of what I do, um, the podcast lives on lives on team iap also includes jen levin and grace gordon <laughs> love that man yeah i was like there were a few people i wanted to reach out to and i was like i still have this really good excuse to talk to these specific people <laughs> and so i pitched them and uh, they were very interested so it's awesome uh hey guys visit us online at insideacting.net sign up for our weekly email dispatch listen to all of our episodes and find us on social media as well we're pretty much everywhere you could possibly be online including uh wherever you get your podcasts you can directly support the continued production of Inside Acting with either a one-time financial con contribution or an ongoing monthly contribution. Just visit InsideActing.net to learn more. And uh, for what it's worth, keep this online regardless of what happens next. All right, guys. That's it for episode 305. Thank you so much for tuning in, for being with us today. Thank you so much. You rock. We can't wait to talk to you next week. Until then, let's roll. Let's roll.